Hey guys, it's Tom here with another Pro Tools audio post-production video, and today I want to talk about documentaries, specifically mixing a documentary or unscripted content. It's a little different from a narrative project. There's less control over locations. There's also some uh, deliverables that you have to be really mindful of, and so I'm going to go through how to set up your session for that. Here in Pro Tools, I've got this template. If you don't have the patience for setting this up yourself and you just want something you can download and get started with, I'll put a link in the description of this video. And it's got pretty much everything you'll need to do a documentary. Obviously, check with the producer, get a spec sheet, figure out what they're asking for. This template covers most of the deliverables that you'll need, minus one or two kind of oddball ones. Uh, just to go through it really quickly, there's a, a surround mix, a surround mix minus, which is minus the narration. Then you have dipped stems, so dipped m &E, dipped music, dipped sound effects, mono voiceover, mono interview, a stereo mix, stereo mix minus, and then stereo dipped m &E. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see undipped, uh, undipped m &E, undipped music, undipped sound effects, undipped stereo of all those m &E music and sound effects. So it seems like a lot, and it is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, National Geographic and Discovery tend to ask for the most, and then like Amazon, they don't really care as much about this. But I figured I'd make the template cover all the bases that way. It's easy to mute stuff versus do all this complicated routing. Uh, if you don't know what dipped and undipped are, what happens with a documentary is there's voiceover and interview. A lot of the times you will dip the music or sound effects or both, the music and sound effects, to make room for that voiceover and interview to be heard. So when they reversion this film and they dub it in a different language, the, the translation that they use could be a lot longer or a lot shorter than the original language. So having undipped stems allows that mixer to do their own fader work and dip things based on the new language translation. And it does add a lot of material. It, it definitely makes it more complicated and you have to mix a very specific way to do this. But it's just one of those things where, okay, I've got another set of tracks to deliver and it's great to be able to do it in one pass because if you don't have it set up right, you'll have to do multiple passes and multiple Pro Tools sessions just to get the deliverables. This is all set up to where you can do it in one pass and it saves you a bunch of time. So the routing for this, I'm not gonna go over in detail, but basically everything is routed to uh, an undipped and a dip stem so that you can do both in the same pass. And you'll notice here on the VCAs, if the deliverables call for these dipped and undipped stems, it will change how you mix a little bit. What I've got here is I've got an m &E dipper, and if I bank over to that track, what that means is I can dip this, you'll see it's writing automation there, and this VCA is applying this dip to my music and sound effects dipped auxes, so they're buses. And that makes it to where with one fader, I can dip around interview or voiceover, and I could basically mix the whole thing with two fingers. So dialogue and then music and effects. It's not very artful, and that's why I have these individual tracks here, because if I wanted to just dip the music, I could do that. If I wanted to just dip the sound effects, I could easily do that. And that will make the undipped stems completely untouched. They'll be fine, but you'll get that somewhat polished mix. Not as polished as if you were mixing on the unit tracks, but... You can't do that and have both dipped and undipped stems without using a bunch of pre-fader sends and it just gets really messy then. This workflow requires you to use the track volume and clip gain to just get a good m and &E mix without any interview or voiceover. So that means if you were to mute your interview and voiceover tracks, the music and effects themselves would have to make a good sounding mix. So you can't do track volume rides, like you can't do this if you have undipped stems with this type of session. You have to do it on the dipper bus or the dipper VCA. That's to keep your undipped tracks without dips. So it does require you to work a little bit differently and use clip gain and the volume just for transitions and ballpark leveling, but it also makes it to where you can deliver everything in one pass. The same thing goes for sound effects where you can't just ride an individual sound effects track down these individual tracks have to add up to a good m and &E mix. So something I'll do for projects like this, even though I really want to tackle the voiceover and interviews first, is I'll go in and mute these three, voiceover, interview, and on-the-fly interviews, and just start with the m and &E. Just get the music ballpark, get the effects ballparked, 
get the NAT sound ballpark to where I can add the voiceover interview and OTF on top of that, and then dip this m &E as a composite stem or as separate music and sound effects stems that have been pre-mixed. So I think that kind of covers dipped and undipped. There's tons of forum posts and stuff you can read about it, but basically it's for versioning and it's just one of those boxes you got to check on your deliverables. So I've got VCAs here set up for voiceover interview, OTF, which is on the fly interviews, so interview shot on location, NAT sound, music effects. I've got the effects broken up into Foley. Uh, Foley's broken up into props, footsteps. Then I've got FX A, B, C, D, E, FX FUTs, if you have any of that, English BG, BGA, and BGB. On the unit tracks here, I've got voiceover, interviews. I've got 12 interview tracks here. They're not really labeled the way I would do it, which is that I would have these labeled by the interviewee. So the person that's being interviewed, that could be Joe, that could be Brad, that could be Sheila, etc. That way, every time Joe comes up in the movie, I can apply his EQ, compression, noise reduction, all those settings, all the way down the whole film. And also if the director says, hey, Joe's a little dark, let's brighten him up a little bit, or let's back off the noise reduction, I don't have to hunt through him being checkerboarded all over the place. He's always going to be on his own track. And in fact, he might have a couple tracks because they might interview Joe in different places. But you'll want to do that if you want to work in the most efficient way possible and have everybody be consistent. Go through, make as many interview tracks as you need, label them on the person's first or last name, and that way you can have those settings throughout the whole film, and it's very easy to tweak them. So then I've got OTF, which are on the fly. These ones I won't do that with because they're usually so different. Um, they could take place in a construction site or on the street. These are on the fly interviews, which are not going to sound as polished as the sit down interviews. And I'll often not noise reduce them at all because if you see the cars in the shot, why try to take them out? And I've got NATs, which are NAT sound. Uh, some people call it SOT, sound on tape, or PFX. These are recordings that were that go with the B-roll. So when they cut away from the interview and there's a car going by, you put that sound here. These can have dialogue on them. If it's featured dialogue, I will put it on the OTF tracks. That way it goes to the interview stem. If it seems like it's really important to what uh, you know the story is or what they're trying to get across, if it's just background chatter, they can stay on the Nats. And this goes to the sound effects stem. On music, I've got just 16 music tracks. Could be more, could be less. You could do A and B if there's A and B cues. Uh, and then sound effects, I do have Foley because some docs have Foley for animation or for special shots where it's a long lens, mic's far away, it doesn't pick up footsteps. It can be great to have that in the budget to do that. And then just standard sound effects in food groups. You'll probably need a lot less than this for a doc. Uh, some docs need a lot of sound effects. Some have very few just for titles and wishes. And then backgrounds. The important thing with backgrounds is because there's not a traditional m and &E as far as full coverage Foley, You'll want to have a mono, uh, you know, fill track, basically, of just a mono background for the interviews, because when you go up here and make this m and &E, when you record this, you don't want everything to just drop out when somebody's talking on screen. Like, we're just seeing an interview, and there's no sound. You can't have that. There has to be something there. It can be super low, but just because the QC people are going to freak out if they see a location and they don't hear some kind of sound, make sure you have some very light mono fill in the background there. Uh, if it's a sequence that's animated, you don't have to worry about it, but definitely for the interviews, you'll want to cut something for that. And that pretty much covers the whole thing. I've got these in folder tracks. I recently started using folder tracks to make things look better and also just keep them organized. So I've got my stems, routing, VCA, VO dialog and that sound, music and sound effects, and it's, it's all set up and ready to go. So again, if you don't want to set this up yourself, and you'd like to just have something you can just open up and get started, check out the link in the description. Um, otherwise, it's really smart. It's a great exercise in routing and signal flow to set this up yourself um, because then you understand how it works. And if you want to tweak it for your own workflow, you know exactly what's under the hood. Thank you guys for checking this out. I hope this has helped you. And if you have any specific questions about mixing documentary film, go ahead and comment below and I'll try to get to them.